What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Smart Money Sundays. Hope everyone is doing well. I know we've had the had a kind of a hiatus with Smart Money Sundays. I was traveling uh, across Europe for the last few weeks, and so just wasn't able to uh, put those videos out. But we are back, and without further ado, we're just going to go ahead and get started here on mainly the majors. And I have a few other um, kind of crosses and exotics that I'm looking at heading into this week. Obviously, in August and really into the first week of September, we haven't seen much volatility, right? There's a lot of choppy price action. Most people are traveling on holiday, um, and it's typically kind of a, a pause in the markets during the month of August. So it's a pretty good time to kind of take a break um, for myself and uh, come back recharged, all right? So Euro USD, all right? Obviously, we've been seeing some significant dollar strength of late. Right? It just doesn't seem to want to stop. Now, what's interesting on EU is if you just look at the higher time frame structure, right? The higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. And we are now trading back down into our what we call last point of return, right? That point at which if we break and sustain and close below, then we would technically be shifting structure to the downside on the higher time frames. All right. Now, that's not to say that price can't run out to the liquidity resting beneath this low and just kind of snap back within the range and then continue with the overall bullish structure, right? In fact, I think that's likely what's going to happen here simply because I've been analyzing this piece of price action, this, this structural point here, this last higher low, and there really isn't anything on the lower time frames that kind of stands out to me that's, that, that says, hey, this, you know, this is going to stop price and be that catalyst to, to push it higher. Right, there's just nothing in there. This is kind of just a block of consolidation before we expand it. All right, for that reason, I think, and, and especially just given the, the momentum that we're seeing in terms of dollar strength at the moment, I would not be surprised to see us kind of wick through this low at least, if not totally break structure right, to the downside. All right, but I just, I'm telling you now, I don't see anything necessarily that's going to stop price and create another higher low here. I think that would just be too clean also, right? Just too clean in terms of higher high and higher low. We need some sort of kind of higher time frame liquidity run in my opinion, right? Because we have a lot of stop losses and sell stops resting beneath this previous daily time frame low. All right, and so for the here and now, I think we can continue to look to sell retracements until structure actually breaks. And that's, that's if we get back above this lower time frame price point here. All right, and so in my opinion, if we do push higher, uh, to kind of start the week and have that kind of uh, intra-week retracement scenario. I do still like this up close candle here, right, in terms of a price point to look for continued sells, right, potentially down into that higher time frame liquidity pool. All right, so that level looks really clean, right? We kind of obviously buy to sell, uh, significant momentum, high volume candlesticks, leaving that inefficient pricing, right, that needs to be filled up. This is just a continuation pattern and therefore induce liquidity. All right, so if we do just push higher immediately, then I certainly would be looking for continuations there on EU and the same goes, same applies to GBP USD. All right, there's really nothing on GU as well that kind of stands out as, okay, it's gonna stop price and be the catalyst to push us higher and into new, another higher high on the higher time frame. Right, and so in these instances, we're just going to have to wait, right? If we, you know, if we are looking for reversals um, back up to the upside on these pairs, I think we're going to need to see some significant consolidation and accumulation and then manipulation in order to start kind of shifting our bias back up to the upside. And so with GU, similarly to EU, right, we have the uh, a nice supply zone as well. We have some descending liquidity here, right? to be run out simultaneously, right? So if we do pop up to start the week, this would be a really clean area, in my opinion, a nice little flip zone, right? Demand, right? Reaction, failure to create a higher high break. We did not retest this induced liquidity to be run out while simultaneously mitigating our up close candle. So that brings us in and around kind of 2650, 2680, uh, where I'll be looking for continuation short if we do get the pullback. Aussie dollar similar. Again, all these dollar pairs are very similar. We have some nice equal lows. We're just chopping around. This is not indicative of a shift to the upside. Now, we do have some kind of relative equal highs here that I don't like, but I don't think that's their 
going to be their objective at the moment. All right, as we are continuing in a downtrend, remember just because we have equal highs doesn't mean that we're immediately going to take them out. Right? They could have a, a more important objective to meet to the downside first before they shift their attention to buy side liquidity. All right, and so I think if we can get up here, obviously we had the mitigation last week. That was a really clean opportunity. If we can get up into further premium, uh, we could have another selling opportunity here um, down into the lows again on AU. Same with NZD USD. I know I gave out, I know I gave out this level. This this is our initial price point. I gave it out to our private VIP community last week. Nice wick entry, right? But I do think, you know, it's it, obviously it's not in in premium price. Um, and if AU is going to push higher, and um, you know some of these other dollar pairs first, then I think we could see another sweep on the highs for NU, potentially even back up into here, right into our true up close candle that ran out buy side liquidity. So <clears throat> either this price point or this price point, which would be better pricing, obviously more further premium for us to sell down into our equal lows and down into 5840, which is the objective. Okay, so that's looking decent. UJ, this one's pretty self-explanatory, right? We're obviously dollar strength is continuing. We're, we're in a massive uptrend. The yen is weak, uh, higher high. All right, obviously liquidity run here before the subsequent higher high was printed. Uh, and so for me now, it's just a matter of can we get down into our down close candle, this, this area of nice discount kind of golden pocket for another push into the highs, another higher high up into 14850. All right, so this is just the textbook, right? It's, it's very simple, um, doesn't require much explanation. You, you all can see this. It's just a matter of can we get that or not? Is it gonna be that clean? <laughs> um, or are we just gonna go ahead and run the highs first? Time will tell, all right? USD Swiss franc, it's a bit interesting uh, because this to me just appears quite corrective Right, if we look at the law of effort, especially the amount of time that it took to get down here and the amount of time it's taking to, to get all the way back up here, tells me that the bears are still in control, but I think that's gonna be dependent upon you know what EURUSD does uh, and when EURUSD is ready to make its move. All right, but I think on Swissy, um, we can at least look for further buying opportunities up into 8,950. All right, it's filling in this inefficiency, this last kind of up close before the significant bear run commenced. Um, and so if we do retrace initially to start the week, then I'll be looking to buy relative equal highs here or descending liquidity, resting above that 8,950 threshold, All right? But that's not really my preferred pair for the week. I rarely trade USD Swiss franc. All right, uh, USD CAD, also a bit tricky because we've run significantly higher than expected originally. Uh, after not having traded into our objective. And I still think that our objective is certainly viable. Uh, it's just we're running out buy side liquidity at the moment, right? And you can see that even on the daily time frame, we're starting to kind of slow down in momentum, right? As we approach our previous high. Uh, and I do like this up close candle here. I certainly like this up close candle on the daily time frame. Uh, and you can obviously zoom in um, and scale in to the lower time frames for precision. I'm not going to do that in this episode. I'm just kind of obviously Smart Money Sundays is more so for our overall bias and expectations. Where are we heading in the markets? All right, but USD CAD would be interesting to see if we get one last kind of push all right, into this up close candle here and then to see what kind of reaction we get from there. Are we going to engulf? Are we going to break down in structure? And we certainly would be confirmed for an overall push back to the downside. Okay, so approaching an interesting level there on UCAD. Euro GBP is another one that I still like. Um, obviously, we had our, our kind of relative equal lows here that were, were created with this wick. And then we had that significant sell to buy. And price came down into um, discounted price, but not all the way down into my preferred level, which is our true down close candle here. All right, in and around 8517. Can adjust this a little bit. That wick. 8520, we can call it. Right? We came very, very close and then we ran higher. Now I, I personally believe this is is a false break to the upside. It's just too clean. And I would really, really like to see if we can get one more push 
down, taking out the people who bought it prematurely, right? Probably 61.8 noobs, right? Get it into this significant area of discount or true down close candle to where we can buy it, right? For another extension to the upside, all right? Targeting previous highs, all right? Getting back up into that area, 8.650, 8.650, right? So I'm still watching out for that one um, if it does occur. Swiss franc, Japanese yen. This one's an interesting one. Uh, we do have relative equal highs, right, or excuse me, perfectly clean equal highs here that we, we ought to be looking to target. Um, there's just some volatility going on with the yen at the moment. Wouldn't be surprised to see this thing um, still maintain the sponsor candle here, which ran out sell side liquidity, right, and then engulf directly into our equal highs. All right, but it's, it's obviously 5.30 right now. The market's just opened. I don't want to touch this, right, really until kind of um, London session, New York tomorrow so we can get that confirmation um, of the break to the upside on the lower time frames and the follow through into our equal highs. But nevertheless, we're looking for excuses here to get long on Chef J into these equal highs as a beautiful target. AD CAD. Another one that's that's still in a massive downtrend at the moment, and therefore we should be looking for every excuse to continue to sell this one. Uh, and so, especially if we kind of clear out structure here, I do like this area for an intraday pullback, this up close candle here, kind of 8, 7, 30 area for an overall continuation. That's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. It looks pretty clean, targeting our previous low right there, okay? A few more guys, a few more. So NZD Japanese yen. I also like this one. Uh, we had that sell to buy and a significant break to the upside, right? Really clean liquidation here. And then we've just, again, think about corrective phases, right? This looks very, very, very corrective relative to our move to the upside, okay? And so I think it's just a matter of time. We're engineering liquidity here. We're just consolidating. Um, and preferably what I'd like to see is one last kind of sweep on this low, right, to get those people who are, who are uh, long prematurely, get them out of the markets, liquidate them, and free up the liquidity needed to push us higher into this previous high here. All right, so just looking for that run on our previous low, uh, and then that lower time frame accumulation, we should be good for long opportunities there. The yen is still very much so weak at the moment. Your JPY, this one looks great as well. All right, just simple, following simple structure, our previous high. Again, that same liquidation uh, event on EJ that as we just saw on, I think it was NJ. All right, we have this nice inefficiency. So it's just a matter of can we get down into discount first, right, into our inefficiency here, where I'd be looking for overall continuations. All right, that looks very, very, very simple. We'd like to keep it simple. All right. Then last but not least, Euro AUD. All right. Again, overall uptrend. This thing is creating higher highs and higher lows. And we have that last kind of flip zone here, right? Trading into supply, that reaction, the failure to, to break and produce a lower low, and then bust higher, creating that higher high. So if we dig down into this, we can, I mean, hell, you can obviously scale in deeper. This is the 12 hour time frame, but this is the overall level where I'd be looking for price to begin accumulating right on the lower time frame, have that last kind of sell to buy into that, the break, and then we'd have that confirmation to go ahead and target our previous high. All right. So that's all I'm looking at right now, guys. Obviously, that everything is subject to change. We keep our VIP members up to date with everything, uh, live setups during New York session as well. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video. You have a pretty clear picture on the higher time frames of where things are heading for the week. As always, safe trading. If you'd like to become part of our VIP service, where we're sending analysis on a daily basis and daily market breakdown videos um, and mentorship with our courses, message us on Telegram at Aerial FX Trading. We'd be happy to get you involved. Or if you're interested in our prop firm automation where we pass challenges for you, risk-free guaranteed uh, or money back guaranteed, uh, certainly shoot us a message on that one as well as we're, we're kind of running out of, of spots for account management as well. All right, have a great week, guys, and we'll talk again next Sunday. Thanks.